uh, we molded ourselves after, after the positive people that wasn't on drugs, that wasn't alcoholics, the, the hustlers, basically. And so they didn't have to really even say anything to us. They demonstrated with action. And, uh, you know, Nip, that's what Nip was about. Nip was about demonstrating and uh, coming back. The people could walk up, touch, see. And, uh, you know, he appreciated whether he said it or not, the pats on the back. And uh, it meant a lot to him. Bro, keep doing your thing, man. We appreciate what you're doing. You're making it look good. You know, you, you, uh, you put us on the map. You know, that shit meant a lot to him. And uh, that shit meant a lot to me from everybody who did that. And, uh, you know. You know. You know, like you said, uh, if I die today, I made the set proud, nigga. You made the world proud. You know, look at this shit, bro. This shit, you know, the whole family appreciates everything. And uh, my grandma, you know, she, she loved him to death and he loved her to death. And, uh, you know, I know she, she was already proud, but she can't, even, she can't even believe the news and the people calling and, and, and just the love that the people feel about bro. You know, it's one thing that I know he's happy about also. Just the family understanding what he meant to everybody else is it, it, very big. Uh, I don't want to be long-winded, man. I just... Uh... <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll tell you some things. Maybe you didn't know about Nip, man. Uh, us growing up, you know, you know, he came, he came home, I, was, I think I was already three when he came home, so, you know, I got whooped a couple times when, he, when, he, when I'm in the room and he came, my mom came in and he's crying, I got whooped. So, um, you know, that was my little bro, man, and I, I just tried to do as much as I could to um, lead a good example and uh, make sure that he was good, you know. <laughs> I hope you know I loved him and I was proud of him and uh, you know I know he loved me man and uh, many a times you know growing up remember the first time I got into a, I mean we, we was fighting all the time but the first time I got into a, a, a fight and got knocked out man it was on 60th and uh, I got knocked unconscious and as I'm waking up you know Nip younger than me is pushing the guy, fighting him down the block, you know, I jump back up and run up, but you know, I just knew, you know, I always knew, but I said, all right, you know, bro held it down when I was out, so, <laughs> for sure, you know, and he was like that at all times, man, just growing up, you know, we, we had a little crew on 60th Street, and we would try to hustle up money, water, lawns, Shovel the, the, uh, the neighbors, uh, 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 dog shit in the back, wash cars, for whatever we could get. And uh, we'd work hard all day, and it, it seemed Nip would just put in 10 minutes and come back with two, 300, and we couldn't believe the shit. <laughs> we like, man, I've been working 12 hours for, for $15, and you can hit the block with 200. You know, he always had a scheme. He, 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 he was always so intelligent and uh, charismatic. And uh, as you can see in the pictures and the slideshows, man, he always had a bright smile on his face. And, uh, you know, he, he walked in the room and he was the, um, he took over the room. He took control of the room and just positive, you know, people came to him since a young age. Even when we first had this first shop, Sloss and Tees, me and Fats and Nip, you know. You know, Adam. We used to always say, soon as Nip pull up, you know, we didn't want all the homies hanging out in the front. You know, soon as Nip pull up, he's there for 10 seconds. I don't know, phone calls is being made, the whole hood is there. It's 100 niggas in the front, 20 guns. And, uh, you know, we just knew that about Nip, man. He just, pe pe he attracted people. People uh, were attracted to Nip, and you know, he always was positive. And uh, I think he just inspired a lot of people, man. So that's, that's one of the things. Um, 
I got so many stories, man. Nip, Nip built our first computer. My grandfather really bought our first computer. We, we ended up breaking it, throwing it away. And then as we got older, when uh, we wanted a computer, Nip would, would come home from school with a backpack full of computer parts. <laughs> and we shared, we shared a room, and we, you know, we shared bunk beds. You know, I was a little older, OCD, I said, you know, hey, we cleaning up today. He would get pissed off. Like, you ain't going nowhere, you helping me clean the room. And uh, he would bring, he brought these computer parts. I'm like, man, we can't keep these in this room. He's like, nah, I'm gonna build a computer. I'm like, man, if you don't get out of here, man, he's like 12 years old. I'm like, man, a computer back then to me was like rocket scientist. So I'm like, there's no way, get this shit out of here. And uh, he came back the next day with another piece of a computer. Came back, it took him about a week, maybe two weeks, and I, we just had all computer parts, loose parts on the floor. And um, he went to a computer auction and bought a case and bought a power supply. And I came home one day, he had the magazine that my grandfather had bought, computer magazines, and he had the computer and it was working and he turned it on and I, I could not believe this. He had built the computer and it was working. You know, at that point, I was just amazed, and I, you know, I really was mind-boggled. I was just, you know, I was proud of him, and, and my mom, everybody, we couldn't believe it. And um, people in the family were coming over, and was so uh, astonished that he was, his, his IQ, or, or just that he was able to do something like this. Later on, a couple years later, he ended up getting software and being able to record music on that computer, and. Um, I remember coming and hearing something that he recorded at a young age, and I couldn't believe that. And I was amazed once again. I had to pull him to the side. I said, bro, did you write this? And he said, yeah. And um, man, it was so complex and something that amazed me again. You know, I came home the next day. I started writing. <laughs> I said, shit, if bro did it, shit, let me see. <laughs> Man, I must have rode for two weeks, and uh, I threw all that away. I said, okay, it skipped me. <laughs> you know, this is a real story. So I, I told him from there, you're special, you know. Just whatever I can do, what, you know, we, we believe. And um, moving fast forward, and uh, as he became, you know, a teenager, 16, 17, 18, you know, I'm seeing the route, and I... I tried to do as much as I could to, you know, keep him out, keep him out of the front line and keep him out of the streets and out of the gang banging as much as I could, like, nah, you know, but, uh, you know, it was really was nothing I could do. And the uh, only thing that, while I'm trying to get money and hustling, I was in my head, like, the only thing we may be able to do is help get this um, music career going because I felt that was the only avenue and that was the only thing he, he would, that he wanted to move toward. And I remember um, one of my goals was just anything I could do to help finance or help uh, match him with or put my head together with, you know, that was gonna be one of my goals, so to uh, see where he took it and uh, just uh, trying to make something legit for him to have, he ended up actually making something legit for me to have and uh, for us to have something legit, something uh, inspirational to attach ourselves to, you know, and not have to be doing something illegal or just to see the, sh the things that he did, the music, people that he inspired us having a shop, people coming from all over the world, man, it's, uh, I said, tell him, it's, 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 it's mind boggling, man, it's like, the field of dreams, you know, he, he built something and the people are coming, paying, paying homage like a Mecca, they coming from all over the world, all over the country, and, um, you know, it's something so special, and, um, you know, we, we, I was talking to him and we, we, we were so heartbroken that Fats wasn't around to, to see the album come out. So I, I just 
couldn't understand how, after all this, bro, go out like this, man. It just really don't make sense. Really don't make sense. And, um, you know, it changed everything I, I, I thought I understood. You know, it got to be some, something, uh, uh, something past this, man, for bro to go out like that. Uh, but, uh, you know, last thing I'm going to say is, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of bro. You know, he always looked out and uh, always wanted to, wanted other people to go. You know, it wasn't just about him getting there. You know, he'd been fly since a young age. You know, it wasn't about that. It was about, it was about bringing it back and inspiring and building. And he had so many plans and he had so many people that he wanted to involve in his plans. And it was getting there, you know. You know, we bought the lot, man, but I don't know how we did it, you know. And that was a big thing for bro, man, because uh, he used to sell CDs out the trunk, you know. He used to be in that parking lot, and uh, they used to try to kick him out of the lot. And y'all and know what we went through with the police in that lot. And... Um, they, I don't know if anybody knows, we had got a 30-day um, notice. And uh, they was kicking us out of all the businesses that we own in the lot. And the, the owner um, was like, man, I'm so sorry. The, the, the district attorney and uh, the, the, the police, they put pressure on us. They said we could lose this property if we don't kick you guys out the lot. I remember this used to be a vacant lot. and People used to be um, scared to rent the lot. You guys came here, you... Um, you changed it. People are pulling up. Every every lot is rented. And um, at this point, if you guys still are interested in buying a lot, you know, rather than kick you guys out, we're willing to sell it to you. So at this point, man, you know, we was all broke. Nip had money invested everywhere. And uh, we... We shook hands and said we do want to buy the lot. We didn't know how we was going to do it, honestly. And um, Nip went on a scramble. I went on a scramble, tapped in with JP, the whole team. And um, I, I honestly don't know how we did it, but um, we, we was able to close and get the lot. And Nip was so proud of that and so, so happy of that accomplishment. You know, I don't drink, man, but... Uh, I went ahead and took a, took a shot with bro, bro for that, man, you know? That and when the album came out, just even the Victory Lap album coming out, man, Nip said he was going to do it. And uh, that was so important for, the, for his debut album to finally really come out. And, um, you know, I'm just so happy that the album was able to come out and he was able to do what he said he was going to do. You know, a lot of people thought, coming up and uh, when he first got signed he was going to get some money and leave you know like he said they didn't have a fucking clue <laughs> you know what I mean they had no clue of what he really was going to do and um, come on yeah I want everybody to know man Nip Nip uh, put his heart and soul on Crenshaw Slauson <laughs> And uh, we used to talk, uh, you know, we got to go. We don't know if we're going to go at 80, 60, 30, or 20. But the one thing is to make sure when you go, you go the right way. You stand up for what you believe in. You put your money where your mouth is. You never fold. You never let the pressure sway you from doing what you want to do. You never let anything, the politics, stop you from coming around and staying around. And I hope everybody knows that that's what bro did. Bro stayed and he died on Crenshaw and Slauson. And uh, everybody who showed love, even the ones who didn't, Nip had nothing but love, nothing but love and respect and humbleness. And uh, that's... 
That's what I want to leave, man. I love him. And uh, I hope I didn't leave anything out, man. Please welcome Lauren London.